Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for April 8th, 2019. I'm teaching a series entitled The Road to the Resurrection. And before I get into the message for this morning, let me just share my heart real briefly. Listen. So um, last week, I started to teach messages about the resurrection of Jesus, the death, the burial, the resurrection, because Easter Sunday morning is coming up. So next week, is the week that many of us call Holy Week and is the week leading up to uh, starting on Palm Sunday and then leading up to um, Good Friday and then, of course, Easter Sunday morning or Resurrection Sunday morning. And next week, I'm going to be on vacation with my with my family, so I'm not going to be doing today's word, so I'm teaching this now. Now, let me just say this, though. While I'm teaching about Jesus and the death, burial, and resurrection, then the, the comments or the feedback that I've gotten on email and even the video views have gone down somewhat. And it saddens me that people just really want to know what they can get from God, with, but, but they don't seem all that interested in what God already did for them. It seems like People just want stuff today. Like in 2019, it just seems like people want stuff from God and they don't really want to talk about the cross and, and, and the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. But at the end of the day, as men of God, as preachers of the gospel, we can't be moved by that. We must preach Christ and him crucified. People have to know what Jesus did for us, all of us on Calvary. So I will always preach Jesus. And I thank you for tuning in to hear the gospel, right? So after this week and after next week when I'm on vacation, I'll get back to the series and I'll get back to encouraging you, but I'm encouraging you in a different way this week. I'm encouraging you through the life of Jesus. So the title of today's message is, It Is Finished. Jesus on the cross had seven sayings. On the sixth saying, he said, it is finished. John 9, 19 and 30 from the King James Version reads, when Jesus had therefore received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. So let's get into the word for today. Let's think about the life of Jesus. When Jesus said, it is finished, what was he really saying? So let me give you the context. Jesus was born of a virgin in a manger in Bethlehem. He lived most of his life like a normal man other than the fact that he never sinned. Now think about that for a minute. Jesus never sinned. Like, you know, not even once. He never sinned. He became the perfect offering for us and for our sin. He was not, he was not tainted in any way. He was a spotless sacrifice for us. At the age of 30, Jesus was baptized. He waited 30 years for a three and a half year ministry. At the age of 30, Jesus was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. Jesus then spent two years or so ministering in Galilee and in Judea. And when things got heated with the rulers of the time, he spent a few months ministering in Perea. This was east of the Jordan to stay out of the clutches of the Jewish religious leadership. Now, after raising two people from the dead who had just recently died, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, the Jews believed that the spirit of a man hovered over the body for like three days. And so maybe these other two people were not dead. But nobody could argue the fact that Lazarus was dead. He was dead. He had been dead for four days. So the resurrection of Lazarus caused Jesus' fame to spread like wildfire. And this is where the Jewish religious leadership, this was like the last straw. They said, forget it. After Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, they were focused on getting him killed. They wanted him crucified. They wanted him out of the picture. But just days before the last Passover of Jesus' life, Jesus moved back toward Jerusalem for the end of his earthly ministry. Now, his disciples were like, man, don't go back to Jerusalem. They want to kill you there. But he wasn't, he wasn't moved by that. He was being ushered in by the Holy Spirit into his purpose. So on the way there, he stopped at Jericho to heal a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, and also to minister to a tax collector named Zacchaeus. Jesus then traveled to Bethany. Whenever he went to Jerusalem, he actually stayed in Bethany at Mary, Martha, and Lazarus's house. And so he went there and he stayed with them for the final week of his human life. Now, Jerusalem, while, you know, Jesus was in the area, Jerusalem was a stir, right? There was a buzz in the town. Why? Because the Sanhedrin had made it known that they were after Jesus and they wanted him killed. So many people thought that Jesus was not going to show up, but Jesus showed up anyway. He traveled those two and a half miles from Bethany to Jerusalem every day of that holy week. 
Now, the Sunday before the Passover, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And the people went crazy. This is the Sunday we call Palm Sunday. The people went crazy, so crazy to the point where they, they were cutting down palm branches and throwing the palm branches down and, and throwing their coats on the ground so that the hooves of the donkey would not even touch the ground. And they were yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, these are the same people who would turn on him and they would be yelling, crucify him, crucify him just a few days later. Now that night, Jesus went back to Bethany. Early the next morning, he got up and he took off back to Jerusalem. And he, he was so focused on what God had for him that day that he took off without eating breakfast. So he, he walks up to a fig tree. It has lots of leaves on it, but it didn't have any figs. And this fig tree was like Jerusalem or the Israelites at the time. Um, so he cursed it. He cursed the tree and he went on. He arrived in Jerusalem and he cleared out the temple uh, from the money changers. So th there were people there that were conducting business in the temple. They were basically defying the temple of the Lord. They were, they were desecrating it by doing unrighteous things. So they were, there were money changers there. There were also people that were selling animals, like sick animals for sacrifice. And they were selling these animals for a profit. And Jesus came and he kicked all of them out. And then he went back home. Now, the next day would be a tough day for Jesus. He had to outsmart the Pharisees all day because the Pharisees were out to get him. Then he had his Passover meal with his disciples. Now, this is the one where you see the picture of, you know, people have it in their house of the Last Supper, right? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Jesus, during this dinner, Jesus told his dis disciples that, hey, look, one of y'all has betrayed me. And they were like, what? One of us? And Jesus already knew who it was. And so after dinner, Jesus takes his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, and he took them to Gethsemane. And um, there, Jesus had, you know, I guess quite possibly the, the hardest battle of his life. It was the battle with himself, the battle within. And after hours of praying, Jesus submitted his will to the Father completely, and he was ready for the cross. So then here comes Judas. Judas comes with the guards and the officials, and Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss and the remainder of that night and early into the next morning, Jesus had to endure six illegal trials. He went to three trials before the Sanhedrin, and then he went to three trials before the Roman tribunals. And this was under the cover of darkness in the middle of the night. And without any real charge, without any real witnesses, without an opportunity to, or time to even prepare defense, and without them finding any guilt in Jesus whatsoever, they condemned Jesus, the only innocent man to ever live, and they condemned him to death. You know the story. They beat him. They crucified him. They hung him on a cross at 9 a.m. And from noon to 3 p.m., the sun refused to shine because the S-O-N sun was shining at that time. At 3 p.m., having fulfilled all prophecy, having completed his assignment, ready to pay for the sin of humanity, Jesus said three words. It is finished. And with that, he hung his head and he gave up the ghost. So what does this mean to you today? I want you to know what Jesus did for you, right? What does this mean for you to you today? I have three things to share with you on this Monday morning. Let's set the tone for the whole week. Here we go. Three things. Number one, the three English words translated it is finished or actually just one Greek word. It is the Greek word Tetelestai. This word has been found on old tax receipts. You know what it means? It means paid in full. Once and for all, Jesus paid the price for our sin. I mean, take a moment to think about that. Remember, growing up, if you were if you were like me, I was raised in a church that really focused on sin and, and told you a lot about sin and how you need to, to repent all the time and confess your sins and all of this. And, and, and I was really sin, you know, conscious. And so think about that. Think about like, like, you know, you have the sin looming over your head all your life where people are telling you about it. And then all of a sudden you come into the knowledge that Jesus, it's like, gives you a receipt and the, rec the receipt says paid in full. Like, like, like this sin issue is not, is no longer an issue. Your debt has been paid. It was paid in full. Jesus said, it is finished. 
Number two, see, you were born with a death sentence. You were born disconnected from God. You were born with reservations to hell. This had nothing to do with what you did. You were not a sinner because you sinned. No, you you sinned because you were born a sinner. You were born with an inheritance of sin and death. And this was the inheritance of Adam. Your performance, oh, let me try to do right. No, no, no. Your performance can never be good enough to get you out of the situation. Striving to be good can never make you right because your issue started before you were born. You were born in sin. So the only way for you to get out of sin is to be born again. And Jesus came to give you that option. Jesus came to give you an out. This is what Jesus meant when he said, it is finished. He was saying, now I am giving everyone everywhere an option. They were born in sin, but now they can be born again in me. And in me, they have deliverance from sin and death. Number three, and finally, when Adam sinned, and the Holy Spirit was removed from man in the Garden of Eden. God was not caught off guard. God already knew what was going to happen, and God already had an answer for it. And that answer was in the form of a person, and that person's name is Jesus. Now, a gulf of time would have to pass by between Adam and Jesus. And in the Old Testament, we see lots of rite and rituals and routine and all of that, but none of that could get you out of the clutches of sin and death. Jesus was and still is our only hope. When Jesus said it is finished, he was saying the journey is over. The mission is complete. The debt is paid in full. Humanity now has salvation from sin and deliverance from death. Jesus's part is complete. God's part is done. Our part is to accept the gift of eternal life through Christ because for him, it is finished. So listen, if his part is done, it is finished. Have you done your part? Your part is to say yes to God's grace. Your part is to say yes to eternal life. Your part is to say yes to Jesus. Have you done it? If you haven't done it, call out to Jesus right now in this moment. And if you have, then live your life in honor of his death and tell everyone everywhere what Jesus did for you. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and declare this over your life right now. Say this, say, Father, I will never cease to give you praise for what Jesus did for me. Jesus willingly took on a debt he did not owe, and he paid a price that I could never pay. Jesus offered his blood as payment for my sin. My debt is now paid in full. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The very least I could do is to live the remainder of my days in submission to your will. You brought me to this earth for such a time as this, and I humbly submit to my purpose. Jesus fulfilled his destiny, and I am determined to fulfill mine. When I get to the end of my life, I want to be able to say, it is finished. In order to do so, I have to live my life with purpose and on purpose. And I declare that I will. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button and get the messages. You'll get my notes in your inbox, in your email inbox for free. You'll get them every day. So listen, Embrace the fact that God's part is done. Jesus's part is finished. Now, what we have to do is accept Jesus as Lord and then live the remainder of our days, fulfilling the purpose that God sent us to this planet to fulfill so that we too, at the end of our life can say like he did, it is finished. Embrace the reality of Jesus. And do me a favor before you leave the screen, please share this message on your social media, on your timeline with your friends. Let's let everyone everywhere know about Jesus. God bless you.